Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to Celeb Sauce. It's the backup channel backing Celeb up and bringing you all the breaking news. Check this out. As you already know, the other day Jamie Foxx jumped on the internet and he dropped a post that said, quote, They killed this dude named Jesus. What do you think they'll do to you? Hashtag fake friends. Hashtag fake love. End quote. Well, after Jamie dropped that post, the Jewish community was outraged. And they were like, what are you saying? This right here is anti-Semitic. And you know we don't put up with no anti-Semitism. So, in the midst of all of this outrage, Jamie took down the post and also issued an apology that said, quote, I want to apologize to the Jewish community and everyone who was offended by my post. I now know my choice of words have caused offense and I'm sorry. That was never my intent. To clarify, I was betrayed by a fake friend and that's what I meant with they, not anything more. I only have love in my heart for everyone. I love and support the Jewish community. My deepest apologies to anyone who was offended. Nothing but love always, Jamie Foxx. End quote. Listen, if I was Jamie Foxx, I'd have left that post right where it was and I wouldn't apologize for nothing. As a matter of fact, I'd have added another post that said, you're all up in the Kool-Aid and you don't know the flavor. Because anyone with common sense could tell that Jamie Foxx was not talking about Jewish people, which was only qualified by the fact that he said hashtag fake friends, which shows you that he was talking about a type of person, particularly a Judas type person, which is a typology that's been used in music, movies, literature, and everything else. Now, when we take that one step further and we put the post in the context of the fact that Jamie Foxx was just in like the hospital fighting for his life, we can infer that he's talking about the fact that when he was on his deathbed, he realized who his real friends are. Now, somebody who does seem to have a little bit of common sense is the actor David Krumholtz from Oppenheimer because he said, quote, I am Jewish and I thought it was one hell of a leap to call it anti-Semitic. I knew exactly what you meant. Everybody needs to chill, end quote. Listen, let me know what you think about Jamie Foxx's original post. And also, what do you think about him taking that post down and apologizing? I'm telling you, personally, I wouldn't apologize for nothing. I mean, would you apologize because somebody misinterpreted what you said? Let me know what you think in the comments. Now, check it out. The other day, Drake was performing during a concert, and he looked out into the audience, and he saw some dude, and he thought that the dude looked snazzy because he had on this fitted hat, and Drake was getting ready to give this dude a compliment, but then he realized that this dude was wearing Yeezys. Check out what Drake had to say. My man, I like the, I like the fitted hat with the blue tee. Yeah, 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 I feel you, dog. You look good. Even though you got those Yeezys on, you still look good. <laughs> Yo, Drake is hilarious, and if like this music thing doesn't pan out, he can do stand-up, cause this dude got mad jokes. But here's my question though, even though Adidas dropped yay, how come people are still running around in brand new Yeezys? I mean this quarter alone, Adidas sold $437 million worth of Yeezys. I mean, y'all don't got no loyalty to yay? I mean if you're a yay fan, when Adidas dropped yay, weren't you supposed to drop the Yeezys? And also, for all of the people who are out there like Adidas needs to drop Ye, cause he's an anti-Semitic speaker, how come y'all don't seem to have a problem rocking that anti-Semitic speaker's sneakers? I mean, the fake outrage is ridiculous. Listen, let me know what you think about Drake getting on the concert goer cause he had on the Yeezys. And also, let me know something. If you don't rock with Ye, can you still rock the Yeezys? Let me know what you think in the comments. Now check it out. In 2020, Kim Kardashian announced that she would be joining Master P and others to try and free C. Murder, who's been incarcerated for 21 years after he was convicted of killing 16-year-old Stephen Thomas outside of a Louisiana nightclub in 2002. Well, the other day Kim K jumped back on Twitter to give fans an update on C. Murder's murder case. Kim K wrote, quote, 
I wanted to shed some light on a case that I've been working on for years. Corey Miller has spent the last 21 years in prison for a crime he did not commit, and his conviction is based entirely on the testimony of two men, whom the state dragged to trial just on material witness warrants. Those men have now sworn that their prior testimony was untrue. There's no remaining evidence that even suggests that Corey Miller is any more culpable than the hundreds of patrons who were at the Platinum Club on January 12, 2002, when Steve Thomas was tragically shot. End quote. Now, after Kim K dropped that post, C. Murder dropped a post of his own, and he said, quote, It's been a fight and a long journey for justice. Thank you, Kim Kardashian, prayers, and everyone involved over the years, praying, advocating, and believing in my innocence. End quote. Listen, you know how it goes. It's very easy to get thrown in prison, but it's very hard to get out of prison, even if you're innocent. So, I hope that in light of this new evidence, the court decides to take a new look at the case. Because if C. Murder is innocent, he deserves to be out of jail. But, I gotta tell you, C. Murder is gonna have an uphill battle. Because a lot of times when these witnesses recant their stories, it begs the question, were you lying then? Or are you lying now? And a lot of these courts don't like to reverse their rulings just because a witness changed up their story. Listen, let me know what you think about Kim K's update on C murder. Do you think that like now that Kim K is on a case, he got a better chance of getting out of jail? Or do you think, give it like two months and Kim K is going to have like a show called Keeping Up With The Criminals. That's all that this is. Let me know what you think in the comments. Now, check it out. Recently, a whole bunch of people online have been body shaming Summer Walker. An Asian doll isn't having it. So she went online the other day and rattled off a series of tweets in Summer's defense. First, Asian doll said, quote, Depression, number one side effect is weight loss. Seeing a woman not physically look like herself can be the reason. Summer has always been a baddie. So y'all hoes kicking her while she's down is some low-ish. I don't care. Y'all bees is fake and love seeing successful women down bad. End quote. Well, after Asian Doll dropped that first tweet, she came back and dropped another tweet that said, Bees be swallowing pills to get thick, but worried about Summer Walker body when they body pumped up with pills off of Alibaba.com for weight gain? End quote. Well, a whole bunch of people in the comments section had been rocking with Asian Doll until she said that. But when she said that, they were like, stop being a hypocrite because weren't you like selling weight gain pills on the internet? Now, when Asian Doll realized that the tides were turning and that people had found out that she was selling them weight gain pills, she came back and she said, quote, hoes was trolling my weight. I made 50K plus off that ish. End quote. <laughs> <laughs> no, this chick didn't. Look, I don't think that anybody should be out there trying to body shame anybody else. But I also think that if you're online selling the Get Thick Pills, you can't be out there trying to shame the chicks who use the Get Thick Pills. You see how that works? Listen, let me know what you think about Asian Doll jumping to Summer Walker's defense and being like bees be swallowing pills to get thick just to be called the hypocrite because she was online selling them get thick pills. Let me know what you think in the comments. Now, peep this. The other day, Boosie jumped online and revealed that he recently visited a juvenile facility that houses at-risk youth. Also, Boosie didn't give any details about the visit, such as when he did it or like which facility he went to. He did reveal that he's hoping to have a positive impact on these young people's lives. Boosie said, quote, I went, talked to some juveniles facing real time, and one of them just reached out and said that my words changed them. I really need to talk to these kids about moving right and doing right. I don't want nobody's child going through what I've been through and seeing what I've seen. I think I can save some lives from telling my story and all that I've lost. Hashtag, I want to help. End quote. Listen, I totally think that if Boosie straightens up and flies right, his story can help a whole bunch of kids. But what Boosie needs to understand is you can't be out here acting like a kid getting arrested on gun charges and all type of stuff and think that you're going to turn around and help these kids because you can't tell them not to do something that you're doing yourself at like 40. Those kids are going to be like, dude, how are you trying to tell me about being an at-risk youth when you're a freaking at-risk adult? <laughs>
<laughs> Listen, let me know what you think about Boosie saying that he wants to help the kids. Let me know what you think in the comments. And hey, yo, thanks for tuning in to Celeb Sauce, your source for celebrity news. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Peace.